Thulium is the second rarest rare earth, least abundant. The only one that is even less common is Promethean, which is radioactive and we can't use it here. I'd never seen Thulium, but our friend Anthony Lipman produced a really nice lump for us. I have to say, that is a really nice sample. And it has given the best Bunsen test that any of us have seen before. So, before we get to that, a few facts. Thulin was discovered in 1879 by a Swedish chemist called Kleve, or maybe Cleve, I don't know, I can't speak Swedish. It wasn't isolated till some time later because purifying these elements is extremely tedious. They had to recrystallize something, not once, not twice, not a hundred times, not a thousand times, but more than 10,000 times, which shows real devotion or obsession, depending which way you think about it. But we didn't have to do that. Our thulium came through the post. And I got really excited. Some years ago, we were sent a video of a six-year-old periodic videos fan, Winston, who got some thulium for his birthday present. I found thulium! I found thulium! Oh, we're having this game. I didn't get quite that excited, but I did send Brady an email. The interesting thing about thulium is that it is moderately reactive in the sense that it will dissolve in weak acids, like dilute sulfuric acid. I mean weak in terms of concentration, not that sulfuric acid is a weak acid. And it makes a slightly cloudy solution and it generates hydrogen. It was quite fun because the cork on the test tube kept on popping off. Neil had enjoyed himself demonstrating that you got a pop when you lit the hydrogen. But what's really quite interesting about thulium salts is that they're fluorescent. If you shine ultraviolet light on it, the thulium ions absorb the UV light, uh, which loses some of its energy while it's absorbed in the atom, and then is, the light is given out in the visible, so it's easy to see, so Brady's camera can see it. There was too much light in Neil's lab, and we had to go into his office. Quite exciting. And his office has no outside windows, so it was really quite dark. And there, in front of the UV light, the solution glowed a sort of pale blue, I suppose, and Neil was very pleased. We then took that solution back to the lab and Neil and I thought perhaps we should test them with some of his favourite solutions. Of course, the solution was still quite acid, so Neil diluted it a bit with water and then divided it up into several test tubes and the first test tube, he added some potassium carbonate and there was some bubbling, presumably because the carbonate was reacting with the acid, but then a not very exciting white precipitate of thulium carbonate. We then tried sodium sulphide, which gave also a not very exciting white precipitate and the smell of bad eggs, which <coughs> Neil didn't like. I warned him beforehand there'd be a smell. And then finally, we used our favourite potassium dichromate. And in the acid, it changed colour, but we got a moderate precipitate. We may be the first people who've ever seen thulium chromate because it's not a very common compound. But then, the exciting part 
Neil and Connor started filing some thulium to get very finely divided particles. And Neil sprinkled them into the Bunsen flame. And that was when the real surprise came. The burning particles gave out a huge amount of light, rather greenish, but also quite a strong crackling noise. We came away feeling that thulium was really much more interesting than we expected. It's called thulium because it's based on an ancient Greek name for somewhere in the north, so it has strong Scandinavian connections, possibly Iceland or somewhere in that region. And originally it was proposed that it would have the symbol TU. I'm not sure why it was changed to TM, possibly because TU is the French word for U. There may be some completely other reason, but I think TM is quite a nice symbol. Special thanks to all our supporters who appear on our periodic table of patrons. If you'd like to give us a little bit of extra help, you can appear here too. We even hang versions in the professor's office and Neil's lab. Details in the video description. Either way, we appreciate everyone who supports us just by watching, maybe even telling your friends about us. Check all the usual places to see even more of our videos. One's first reaction is that it can't possibly be real because normally you don't see such things.